this is my video on the essentials for doing a M274 water pump. So um, the main thing that I learned was you actually don't have to remove the turbocharger. There's another video on YouTube where the guys uh, disconnect the wastegate and they just act like you can slide this turbo out of the exhaust manifold. You can't. I soaked it in aerocroil, tapped it with a hammer, I heated up the exhaust manifold side with a torch, tried to get it hot to expand, and then I grabbed onto here with gloves and, and wiggled. The turbo doesn't really come out. Um, talked to a Mercedes service technician and he agreed that that thing, it's sealed up from the factory, not really meant to be removed. So I'm going to put that back together. I was going to maybe take the exhaust manifold off when I realized that to get the water pump out of that hole, that it's, it's down in here. Um, it almost comes out in one piece, but the heat shield, it gets in the way. So um, that's what the, the heat shield looks like. If you just have to take the heat shield off the old pump and the new pump and then you can wiggle it out uh, from behind the exhaust manifold. The reason we're doing this job, the symptom is the car overheats under high load. So if you're driving over 80 miles an hour up a hill and it actually overheats worse with the climate control on. If you're running the heat, then it diverts coolant flow through the cabin heater uh, instead of going through the radiator. So then the car overheats more you find that your overheating problems go away when you turn the blower off completely, then it's probably your water pump. And the malfunction is right here. There's this little plunger. This It looks like my plastic, this guy has come out and there's a little piston in there. Let's see if you can see it with the sunlight. Yeah, there's a plunger in there that must have frozen in place I don't know if it iced up in the winter after I pressure washed the engine or if it's just corrosion, but the uh, the plastic uh, piston has, has come, the connecting rod has come out of there. Um, so if you try to actuate this one, it doesn't really do anything. This, um, Oh, you know what? It was actually stuck in this position when I pulled it out, and I had to force it really hard. And it, I might have popped the, the connecting rod out, and the piston was just jammed inside. Uh, the, on the new one, when you suck a vacuum here, it pushes that piston in and slows down the flow of coolant. But when you release the vacuum, the water pump should have full coolant flow. So that's how the water pump is supposed to operate. Uh, I don't know if I'll drill this one or open it up and uh, try to free up that piston, keep it as a spare. Maybe I'll just junk it and not worry about it. Um, when you do the job, you'll need four replacement O-rings for your coolant lines. So be sure to buy those as well. As the, these four um, they don't I te we checked if they match any of the normal o-rings that come in the blue or the red box that everybody seems to have and these are a little bit thicker so I went with the Mercedes ones they cost four dollars each kind of rip off maybe I'll see if I can find a, um, a German o-ring kit that works instead other than that everything's pretty straightforward I found it hard to disassemble, separate these two because they're both hard plastic. Wouldn't come apart, so I just left it in place. Um, and I'd take apart all the coolant hoses that are in the way in the front of the engine, get them out of your way, take out the air box, and then there's three e torx bolts holding the water pump in place. Other tools you need um, I have a little e torx socket set. Ended up using the E8 for the water pump heat shield.